Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies bringing you another Age of Sigmar painting tutorial. Games Workshop very kindly sent me out the new Blood Pelt Hunter um, from the Ogre Ma Tribes collection from Age of Sigmar and I've decided to help you guys get it painted up and ready for the tabletop. So stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, this is the beautiful Blood Pelt Hunter. I've been looking forward to this for a while as uh, ogres were actually the first Warhammer army I ever did so I have a very uh, soft spot for them. I sprayed this model Chaos Black and then went all over it again with Grey Seer Spray to act as a kind of zenithal. I then got to work on the flesh, I used Gulliman Flesh Contrast and just got in amongst all of the skin. Uh, he about 50% skin in this model, um, he's got his feet, uh, don't forget those. Uh, and then, but most of his upper torso is actually free. His whole waist is completely cluttered with like bits and pieces. But from like the kind of waist slash stomach up, uh, there's a lot of skin. This is obviously a deeper into the model than anything else. So it's easier just to start off with some golden flesh contrast and get in amongst that. It's also quite a light color. So if you accidentally hit up the, the bow or the gut plate or anything like that, the other contrast we're going to be using is going to be darker. So we'll be able to go over it. Gorgrunt of four was used for the pants. And um, I realized later on in the miniature that I should have done a few other bits and pieces with this. So later on, you will see a jump where suddenly like the frame of the crossbow and the shafts of all of the weapons, the spears and the ax on his back are all done with Gorgrunt of fur as well. And um, so yeah, once we get to that stage, now that I should have done them at this stage, I just wasn't sure what direction I was gonna take those pieces in at that stage. I then moved over to Skeleton Horde, and this was to base coat the the monstrous beast that he has strung across his back. Um, it seemed to be some sort of kind of snowy beast, so it had a very light pelt. And although I'm not basing my ogre hunters, or my ogres in general, in the snow, I still like the color scheme, so I'm going to start with the uh, Skeleton Horde contrast paint and get a good coat of that all over the beast. Funny enough, this piece is on the back of the miniature, and for some reason, I feel like this is the main focal point of the entire miniature, this huge, big, monstrous pelt. Um, so I spent a good bit of time uh, trying to make it as nice as possible. Croxagore Scales, one of the newer contrasts, it's absolutely stunning color. Um, I use this to base coat the weird Draconis Strakoth head thing that he's using as a quiver for his crossbow bolts. I think it's still a quiver if it's a crossbow or a bow, maybe I'm wrong. Sawgore Brown was used for some of the other brown details. Mainly he's got another satchel kind of tucked away um, on his uh, left butt. Um, so I just went in with a bit of Sawgore Brown. I just wanted to break up the different brown tones. Obviously you could choose any other browns you have, any other brown contrast you have for his pants and crossbow bolts and all those kind of bits and pieces. Yeah, but these are the ones that I think go together quite well. Lead Belcher was used for all the metallic parts in this. So heads of uh, bolts, the framework of the crossbow, spear tips sword and all other bits and pieces. I must admit that at this point, yeah, I, I thought to myself, this model is going through the ugliest, ugly stage of any model I've seen. Like, I really wasn't sure where this was going or how it was going to come together at the end. And I promise you, it does get a lot better when we get through the wash stage and we actually start putting some layer uh, layering on the miniature. But right now, it does look god awful. And most paint schemes will go through a phase of this where it will just look awful until you start putting in some of those final details. The trick is to be persistent and uh, trust the process. Just keep it going. You're going to be much happier with the model finished than you will with the model left at the ugly stage on your shelf. Serum Sepi was the shade I decided to go with for the entire piece, so I went for a nice coat of this all over everything. This is, of course, the new 18mm pot of Serum Sepi, which is a little bit thinner than the older one, so it doesn't quite settle on all the large flat areas um, like the old one did. I also took the time while that was drying to base up the miniature in like a rich brownie kind of soil because I will be asking, um, adding grass stuff and stuff later on. The new sewer contrast was used on that pelt and um, I just wanted to uh, darken up some of the edges so I noticed the one of the box art had like a darker pause and then down its whole mane it was a little bit darker. So uh, before I got onto the dry brush stage of this I just wanted to darken out a few more of these pieces. So. Pause going up his leg and the main done with the new gar 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 -nac gar black sewer paint. I just called the sewer paint because I can't say the first bit. After those were dried, it was time to move over to the dry brushing. So it's two stages. We're going to go with Screaming Skull first. And I just want to give this a nice light coat, just catching all of the raised strands of hair uh, and some of the more defined features across its face. 
And this is of course gonna make the uh, the pelt jump out. So we're gonna add all that detail back in. Never underestimate the uh, the use of a good dry brush in a painting scheme. You'll be shocked what it can do with a miniature. I've also started using these uh, kind of flat base brushes uh, for dry brushes because they have that little point. They're a little bit easier to get into some tighter spots. Seem to be working out yeah, great. Pallid Witch Dress was used as another dry brush across the pelt. This is more on the white side. So this is much lighter, just trying to catch the very tips of the pelt. And I honestly think it's making it look really, really cool. And the last thing I did on the pelt, apart from things like teeth, was Berserker Bloodshade, one of the new shades. And I just did this on the kind of dismembered back half of the beast. So all of that torn flesh on all across those exposed ribs, ribs are never going to be as freshly white and clean as that. So I went across them with the Bloodshade paint just to make them look like they've been stained by old blood. Maybe he would have washed this thing off in a river or whatever, but it would still be uh, this kind of red, dark red color. From here, it was time to work on the skin. Uh, for this, I used Cadian Flesh Tone to put a layer down. This was gonna turn out to be a little bit bright for my liking. I still like the direction I took it in, the Cadian. Uh, but instead of layering it up with like a Kislev afterwards and brightening it up even further, uh, I'm gonna decide to throw a Reichland Flesh Shade, which of course, again, is the new 18 mil pot, so it's really thin. And I'm basically just gonna add a tan to the model. Like I said, I want my ogres to feel like they're from kind of the lowlands, um, brush meadows, forests, trees, kind of more on the side of sun than in the frozen norths or mountains or anything like that. Not a big fan of the ice look for ogres. I prefer the more natural style, especially for things like hunters. Um, so I throw a Reichel flesh shade across this skin again, and I think it worked a treat for um, giving me the results that I wanted to have for this miniature. I did have to take my time and make sure I wasn't getting that floating muscle syndrome that people go on about. I did get it a little bit, but I actually don't mind the look of that so much. And taking some time around that face, seeing how he's got all of those belts and straps across his face now. Hold on his, his nice little antlers for reasons. Um, once I had the skin done, like I said, it looked a little bit too clean for me. So that's when I went to the Reichland Flesh Shade and gave it a nice coat all across the skin. Doesn't matter too much if we hit those straps across his face because we haven't layered those up just yet. We also want to make sure that no pooling whatsoever happens because we're actually not going to go over the skin again after the shade. And this is the skin tone that I was quite happy with. And I think I'm gonna leave my ogre skin at. Mornfang Brown was then used to highlight all of those bits we did the Gorbrunt of fur, so his pants, and all of the wooden parts across the crossbow, shafts of the axes and spears and stuff that uh, stick out the back a little bit. Not too much, but. So we just high, basically highlighted all of the higher areas and left all of the creases and shadows in his trousers nice and dark. crossbow itself is an immense thing it's huge I mean I know it doesn't look that big but it's the size of a space marine as a, <laughs> as an individual thing so you got to try and make this uh, like I said it's one of the focal points of the miniature so you got to take your time give it the kind of respect it deserves so tech green was the first layer I chose to do on his decapitated head quiver and I just very carefully layered this up. Once again, because this color doesn't match anything else on the miniature, it's quite a bizarre standout piece. That means that when somebody is looking at this model on the table, that bit will stand out. So it is worth it to put a little bit more time and effort into this than like his feet or that little bag on his back or even his gut plate isn't gonna stand at that too much because it's so solid silver. Pallid Witch Flesh, I grabbed that really quickly and decided I need to break up all of the like um, strapping on the bow. So there's, you'll, you can see very clearly when you're holding the miniature that there's straps that go around the front of the, the crossbow holding it together and then there's different kind of string holding um, the bolts in place as opposed to the bit where the bolt actually sits. 
maybe I'm not describing that right, but um, I just blocked those in with Palette Witch Flesh and then threw an Agrax Earth Shade over the top of those just to muddy and darken them up. Once again, trying to break up the amount of Mornfang Brown on the bow. I think that worked quite well. Iron Breaker was used to highlight all of the metallic parts across this piece. And there is a few bits uh, tucked away, all the bolts of the uh, crossbow, some ringlets, some studs in his straps, um, heads of spears, all those bits. Go around and get them. And of course, his gut plate. Corvus Black was the black I used to highlight all the black parts of the miniature, which are actually the shafts of the crossbow bolts are black. He obviously has some sort of magical black wood that he likes getting his, his bolts from. Maybe they're just stained from old blood or I don't know. And also his leather strap that went up over his shoulder. And the straps going across his face also got a coat of the Corvus Black. I also went in and did things like the claws on the pelt. I gave them black claws, kind of like a bear would have. Back to Screaming Skull, and that was to highlight the antlers going across the top of his head. This was another thing, just like the skin and the um, fabric stuff across his crossbow, where I highlighted it with the Screaming Skull, and then felt it was just a little bit too bright. It was taking too much attention away from the rest of the piece. So when it was dry, I just very quickly threw an agarx search shade across it. It's one of the things I do like about the new shades because they are so thin and so smooth, you can just throw them over things to darken them down, but leave them at that stage because they just, they don't really do any of that kind of pooling or staining of the higher areas. And um, they're almost tinting it or staining it or glazing it or whatever way you want to say it. Um, but I'm starting to work with them a lot more and I'm quite liking the results. Corn red was used for the arrow fletches, fletch, whatever the uh, feathers on a crossbow bolt or uh, arrow are called. Um, on the box art, they were red, so I went to follow through. So I went for a two stage paint on this. So we're going to start with corn red. And then I believe while I'm waiting for those bits to fully dry, I go and do something else. And then I'll come back to the final highlight. But Colia green shade was used to act as a patina for his good plate. So on all those old scratches from whatever gnarly beast he took, picked a fight with back then, I'm going to add just a little bit of Collier Green Shade into that. And then around all the rivets and bolts in the gut plate as well. Once again, this was me following the box art on this. No other part or metallic part had any of the patina on it, which kind of lends it the idea that this gut plate has been on him for uh, quite a long time, much longer than any other equipment that he carries. Evil Sun Scarlet was the second coat of red for the Fletch of the arrow. This was only done on all the very tips. And like I said, because this crossbow is so big, the bolts are so big that the fletches are actually big enough to um, give a two stage highlight on. I added some nice shrubbery to the base um, just to stand out a little bit more and add a little bit more color into it because I thought it was mostly kind of browns and beiges apart from that head. And I thought this little kind of pocket of color really did help finish the miniature off. And I was delighted to call uh, this Ogre Blood Pelt Hunter complete and ready to put on a tabletop. Absolutely loved painting this miniature. Okay guys, and there we have it, one Blood Pelt Hunter painted up. Now, I must say that this model was a little bit of a challenge to paint at times as there seemed to be so many things going on in so many different places across the miniature. It was hard to remember what stage I was at one thing before I went on to another and kind of vice versa. But I think I managed to pull it all together in the end and I am quite happy with the result and he will sit proudly amongst the rest of my Ogre Maw Tribe collection. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like button. If for some crazy reason you are not already subscribed to my channel, it would mean the world to me. If you took two seconds out of your day and hit that subscribe button. If you have any questions about anything I did in this video or any other video, please don't uh, hesitate to drop me a comment below. I will get back to each and every one of you guys. And if you like what I do a lot and want to support me even further, there's links to things like my Patreon below. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.